You know, this is why I'm kind of at peace with the idea of the Canucks being as bad as they are. Heck, not even just being bad, but performing poorly. I guess that's the best way to put it, because we know that this team's a lot better than what we've seen on the ice these past seven games or whatever the heck it was. And this is kind of why I'm at peace with it, because we can make so many videos discussing the hypothetical trades and the future and what needs to be done to fix this, because when everything's going well, you don't have these conversations. Oh, Lego, you're just being pessimistic again. What are you doing talking about Miller and Bo? Who stays? Who goes? Because the team is doing poorly, hey, this conversation is open floor, and everybody wants to get their two cents in. So, simple question, should I stay or should I go? Is it JT or is it Bo? We'll go over their situations to let us know which one is yes and which one is no. So, JT and Bo are the two, let's just say primed conversation pieces when it comes to who the Vancouver Canucks need to get rid of. We had ourselves an entire JT thing that had been going on ever since the summer of last season, and whether or not he was going to be on the move, anybody's going to go out there and make a trade offer for this guy, or would the Vancouver Canucks keep him around and sign him to a long-term deal, the latter of which is what ended up transpiring. I think a lot of people are kind of looking at the trade ideas that we had been talking about in the summer, saying, oh, Niels Lungfist, a first-round pick and Cheadle from the Rangers, that's looking pretty good right about now, man. I know back then we said it wasn't good enough, but have you seen how JT's been playing lately? I know he had two goals in the Carolina game yesterday, but still. The reputation that JT has had in this fan base from the pumpkin patch to the jerseys getting thrown on the ice, it's definitely not been good to start off 22-23. But for JT, the Vancouver Canucks committed eight years to him. And I say eight because they have one season left at 5.x million dollars for this year, and then the eight million dollar AAV by seven years extension kicks in in 23-24. The Canucks have their money's worth tied with JT. As for Bo, he's making 5.5, and he's a guy expiring at the end of this season. The idea of trading Bo Horvat is interesting. Because when it comes to the conversations, let's just say a few months ago, oh, if you're signing JT long-term, it means you're choosing JT over Bo, because you still have to sign Bo too, and you didn't end up re-signing Bo to a long-term deal. Now you have articles like this coming out in Canucks Army, once thought inconceivable, trading Bo Horvat must now be considered for the Canucks to get back on track. And so when it comes to either of these two guys, Bo or JT, the question is simple. Who would you trade first if you had to trade one, or do you want to keep them both? Let's go over to the comparisons over here. Firstly, when it comes to age, Bo Horvat is two years older than JT Miller. He was drafted in 2013. Miller was taken in 2011. Miller is almost 30. Bo is 27 years old. So when it comes to the age, Bo definitely has a leg up on JT in that respect. Also, there is the fact that he is a homegrown talent that was the captain of the Vancouver Canucks the past few seasons. Therefore, there's a little bit more of a commitment, I feel, from the Canucks fan base to say that Bo has their hearts. Meanwhile, on the flip side, you already have JT signed to an extended amount of money, and why is that? It's because last season, the guy got 99 points in 80 games played. He was a 100-point caliber player who ended up getting that amount of production just because it was every second pass on the power play. I've said this before and I'll say it again, I don't necessarily think that if you put JT Miller on any other NHL team, that he would get the same amount of production, it's just in Vancouver, there was a very good opportunity for him to showcase his offensive capabilities, his goal scoring, his playmaking, it's all there in Vancouver, or at least it was last season, it's not really there this season because, yeah, the team sucks to start off the year. But for JT, there is an obvious point production advantage that he has over Captain Bo. Furthermore, you have yourselves the leadership, the discipline, the on-ice stuff. This is a tweet from Vanessa that kind of summarizes both of these players and their attitudes and responses to the jersey throwing. Bo Horvat said after the jerseys were thrown in the Buffalo game, we haven't really given the fans much to cheer about. When you see it happening again this year, it definitely sucks. I understand their frustration. JT, meanwhile, says, I didn't have a reaction to the fans throwing their jerseys on the ice during the game, and I don't have one now. 
if the fans want to throw their crap on the ice, it's up to them. One is going out there and saying, yeah, you know, the fans have the right to be upset. We haven't been giving them a product that's worth cheering and worth praising because we've been bad. JT, on the other hand, is like, yeah, no, screw you. If you want to throw your jersey on the ice, that's your problem. I don't care. Like, why does that concern me? One of them is going out there with the, yeah, we got to give the fans something to cheer about approach. The other is going with the hard-nosed individualistic approach. And I'm not saying that one is right or wrong. I'm just noting that there is a very obvious difference there. You can let me know in the comments which one you think is more appropriate to be exhibiting in the Canucks current state of distress. But either way, when it comes to the long-term future of the Vancouver Canucks, there's so much doubt floating around this fan base and the market nowadays as to whether or not this is really the core to be able to get it done. Obviously, building around a core of Demko, Hughes, and Pedersen wasn't that bad of an idea. These are three young-ish guys that are pretty elite and going to be franchise-defining players for this team if they're not already. The problem is, they still have contracts like OEL on the books for an extended amount of time, and they signed JT Miller for an extended amount of time too, when you could very much debate that JT and the way he's been showing off in the first seven games of the year isn't really worth committing the extra seven years and eight million dollars per year to. There are some younger pieces on this team, Hoaglander, Pud Colson, you have Lekaramaki coming up in the system, not to mention the fact that you have Andrei Kuzmenko and Mikheyev, two Russians signed on, that are supposed to be pretty good top six capable forwards. But when it comes to JT Miller, he isn't really fitting in that age range. As for Bo, the reason he's in this conversation now too is because, hey, the guy's contract is expiring this season. If he's going out there and wanting to, let's say, I don't know, maybe move on from the Vancouver Canucks and their incompetently run franchise of trying to build for the future while also stockpiling the now, Bo has a very legitimate chance of pulling off a Johnny Gaudreau or a Matthew Kachuk at the end of the year, where he straight up says, yeah, okay, I mean, I'll talk to the fans and the media and I'll say that I want to stay in Vancouver, but at the end of the day, I'm the one negotiating the contract, or at least my agent is, he's just kind of saying whatever I want to say. If there is a possibility that Bo Horvat leaves the franchise in June of next year, which is looking a lot more and more like a possibility at this stage, you have to consider the idea of pulling the plug on Captain Bo and his reign on this team sooner rather than later. Because the worst thing you could do is have Bo go off to free agency and have him sign elsewhere and you have nothing to show for it. At the very least, if he's a trade deadline rental, let's say the Canucks are bad by the trade deadline. They're still last in the league. Maybe they don't even have a win yet. Bo getting traded is going to make some other playoff caliber team pretty happy. The Canucks are probably going to get themselves at least a first round pick and another prospect because rentals go for that sort of price. Heck, maybe even a tad more because a first round pick from a playoff caliber team is probably going to be somewhere in the 20 to 30 range. So if you get something like that, plus a B tier prospect and maybe even a second or a third, I mean, that's not too bad, I'd think, especially for a guy who was the captain for so long. But for JT, it's a little different because you're not going to be able to just easily say, okay, well, trade him for Lundqvist, a first, and Cheadle again. He's no longer a one-year rental. He has money committed to him. He's been performing, let's say, a little bit poorly at the start of the year. And there's this entire sentiment amongst the fan base that's like so negative at this point that I don't know if the Vancouver Canucks even have any bargaining power towards this kind of a contract. There's a reason we talked about Miller as if he was the next Louis Erickson because people here in Vancouver are freaking out in more ways than one. So... Talk to the comments your thoughts about Miller and Bo, which one stays and which one goes, and just the overall trade conversation behind it. Because of course, if your philosophy on this team is to go through a rebuild, that in which it appears the Vancouver Canucks might not actually want to do, one of these guys is probably going to have to go. And if you get a Connor Bedard in the draft or a center in the draft or somebody that is very good as a young center, you're going to have to move out one of these guys because long term, Bo's not signed yet. Long term, you're probably going to want to keep Petey. So there are more conversations than one to happen. But at this point, talk in the comments about your thoughts about Bo versus Miller. What are your thoughts? Let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.